Hello everybody and welcome to my video tutorial about Nuflex actuators. Here is such an actuator. It's made out of silicone and you can bend it, you can twist it, you can squish it and it's not going to break. On the inside there's a small air chamber and when we inflate it, the whole stick bends. The stiffness and the necessary pressure depends on the materials and the geometry of the actuator itself. You can even hit it with a hammer and it's not going to break. But the best thing is, it's very cheap and easy to build. So the only thing you actually need on special equipment are a vacuum chamber, a vacuum pump of course, and it's very good to have a 3D printer handy or a 3D shop where you can go print the stuff. So let's go on to the materials we actually use for building this actuator. The main ingredient is rubber, so here we have a two-part silicone rubber of a platinum cure type. Uh, we use the Smooth Foam brand, it's a very soft and very elastic silicone. Additionally, we need sewing thread made out of polyester, and also a fabric called monofilament polyester screen, which is usually used in silk screen printing. So basically that's it. The whole actuator just consists of silicone rubber and polyester fibers. Uh, of course, we need some uh, techniques to actually assemble those materials, uh, but they are quite easy to learn. First, you need a 3D printer for printing molds. Second, you need a decent vacuum pump and vacuum chamber. Silicone is very viscous when mixed and it traps a lot of air bubbles you want to get out to not weaken the rubber. And also we can use it to flow the silicone into intricate molds without any other special equipment. To create the main rubber part of a Nuflex actuator, we use a simple mold. It consists of two 3D printed parts and is open on the top. If your mold has a very rough surface or is of porous material, it's a good advice to use a sealing agent such as uh, this here uh, to seal the surface of the mold. If you then still have problems extracting the cast from the mold, you can additionally use a release agent before each casting. Simply cover all of your mold with the release agent. Then you need to assemble the mold parts. Put them together and make sure they are fixed well. You also need to mount the funnel on top of the assemble because we need to pour the silicone there. Then take your assembly to the vacuum chamber and check that it actually still fits in there. Yep, it fits perfect. When we are finished preparing the mold, we can start mixing the silicone. First, start with measuring part B. If you want to have a colored silicone, you can now add pigments to it. As a last step, we add the second component by equal weight. Now comes the crucial part. We have to mix the silicone very well, so start mixing vigorously and don't forget to scrape off the sides at the bottom of the mixing cup. And then we put the silicone into the vacuum chamber for degassing. To speed things up, we use styrofoam parts to reduce the volume of the chamber.
This is a 10 times speed and shows you how the silicon foams up during evacuation and then suddenly collapse. This is when most of the air has gone and you can extract it from the vacuum chamber. Now the batch of silicon is ready to be used. When we have the silicon ready for pouring, we take the mold we prepared before and place it into the vacuum chamber and fill the silicon into the funnel. Then we again start to evacuate, so to get the air out of the mold and the silicone to be able to flow into it on its own weight. If you experience problems with trapped air bubbles, even if you evacuate, it often helps to cycle between evacuation and uh, reinflating the air chamber several times during the pot life of the silicone. Finally, we can take the mold out of the vacuum chamber and place it somewhere else for the silicon to cure fully. Uh, this takes about a day. Uh, you can speed this up by putting it into an oven at 60 degrees for two hours. When the silicon is fully cured, we can start to extract it from the mold. Um, this can be sometimes quite tricky, so uh, you have to find your own experiences. Uh, it helps to start to loosen it at the open end and it also helps to use a cutter to open up the lids a little bit and then to wiggle around to get all the things loose in there. Once the lid is loose we can take it off and finally see the result of our casting and hopefully there are no trapped air bubbles in there. Now I'm going to show you how to attach the reinforcement helix. First we insert a stiff piece of plastic into the rubber part to make it more handleable. Then we fix the start of the thread with a few turns and start winding along the actuator. By adding pumps to the rubber part we can make winding much easier as you can see. When we reach the end of the actuator, we keep on winding but reverse the direction. The threads cross at the sides. When you again reach the other side of the actuator, you can stop winding and make a knot with the beginning of the thread. After that, cut off the surplus. Of course the support material is still sticking in the rubber part and we need to extract it now. Here is how it's done. Probably some of the threads moved during the handling of the rubber part. So now you can use a pincer or a needle to move them back to where they belong. The upper part of the actuator, or what we call the active layer, is now finished. Uh, we can now go on to produce the lower part, or what we call the passive layer. The passive layer is a sheet of silicon with an embedded fabric, so it's flexible but not elastic anymore. Production is pretty simple. You start with a pan, place a fabric in it and pour degassed silicon on top.
We use a broad spatula to distribute the silicon. The silicon should be about 2 mm high. This assembly also goes into the vacuum chamber for degassing again. Before the silicon cures, we put the active layer on the passive layer to glue them together. We then let it cure overnight again. Basically the actuator is not finished, but the helical thread on the top is still loose, so we use a little bit of silicone to fixate it there by brushing it on top. When the silicone is cured once again, we can start to cut out your actuator and now we only need to attach the supply tubing. We do this by taking an aspiration cannula, which is a very thick needle, and penetrate the wall of the actuator. Then we feed a small silicon pipe through the cannula and retract the cannula. Finally, we seal the cut with some glue. And there you have it, you just finished your first Muflex actuator on your own.